live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, December 29th. Did I say Friday? Friday. Friday. It's Friday. David. We made it to Friday. It is the last Friday of 2023, David. Every day this week's been the last day. Of the, <laughs> so, yeah. But this is the this is Friday. But this is, but this is Friday. You got to make it count, isn't that right, Mike? Yeah. Well, and why does it seem? I agree with you, Sarah. But it seems like when you say the last Friday, that just like no one cares more. about the last Wednesday. Good point. So anyway, uh, if you're heading out early this morning, pretty much a repeat as we were talking about repeat of yesterday. It's cold out there, 39 degrees. So it, we're already below normal. We're not done cooling off yet. That dew points down to uh, 33, so we can still drop down a few more notches. A little bit of a breeze out there and a, a couple of clouds. A little breeze may keep us from getting as cool as what we could actually get. Yesterday, low 60s. Today, low 60s. A spectacular day today is in store, as well as pretty much the the rest of the year. The aquifer dropped down four tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens. Mountain cedar came down about half of what it was the previous day. Still, it is on the high side. Mold is low. Take a look at uh, some of the temperatures around the area because we're already down to freezing up there in comfort. Kerrville was at freezing. It's jumped up just a degree or so, 35 in Bulverde. And like I said, we will continue to drop down over the course of the next couple of hours down to the mid 30s here in town. So cold start, beautiful day today. Enjoy it. If you are heading out this evening, once again, it's going to cool off very quickly, so take a jacket with you. Uh, same start tomorrow, then it's going to be warmer in the afternoon. We're looking at some mid 60s Sunday. A chilly morning, not as cold in the morning, warmer in the afternoon, and we're still looking at that front to come through late Sunday night in the wee hours of the new year. And 2024 is going to be starting off on the chilly side. It's going to be chilly all week long. A couple of rain chances as well. As a matter of fact, by speaking of chilly Tuesday, it's going to be tough to even get out of the 40s because of the clouds and some rain. Quick sneak peek of New Year's Eve. Like I said, 70 on Sunday. Then the front comes through here. It is going to be breezy, about 10 degrees cooler front comes through dry though so if you are heading out on New Year's Eve we're not gonna have to worry about anything like that we'll talk about those rain chances coming up in just a couple of minutes if you are hitting the road this morning traffic authority take a look around town with some of the uh, trans guide cameras right now and again you pretty much got the road to yourself and well, a handful of friends out there at 10 35 north at 410 everything's moving along very well one more stop 35 at Flores no problems there if you do hit the roads Drive carefully. We'll keep checking them all morning long. Sarah, David. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a woman's in the hospital fighting for her life after being shot in the chest and the hand. It happened on the city's west side. San Antonio police say this happened at the Pros Apartments on Westover Hills around 1030 last night. The victim showed up at her ex-boyfriend's to get her belongings. And that's when she allegedly got into an argument with another woman inside that apartment. The man shot her. The woman was taken to the hospital. Both the men and the woman were detained for questioning. Firefighters in Converse work to put out a garage fire just before one o'clock this morning. Converse officials say people living inside that home all got out safely. Estimated damages are believed to be around $100,000. The Red Cross was called out to assist the family in finding a place to stay. Mourning a loss while pleading for justice. San Antonio police still trying to figure out how Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra ended up dead in a car with gunshot wounds. The medical examiner's office says both deaths have been ruled as homicides. SAPD has released new surveillance video. Daniela Ibarra has the latest with that footage and what SAPD is calling people of interest. A clue in a callous crime. Clearly, it was a heinous act. Two days ago, San Antonio police found pregnant Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra, dead in a car on the northwest side. Now, they're sharing this surveillance video. We are hoping that uh, someone is able to identify the individuals that are seen in this video. McManus says this clip was taken not far or long before the gruesome discovery on Danny Kay. Detectives right now are combing through days of surveillance video from several different locations that the victims were known to be. These two people are who police are calling people of interest. One is in a dark pickup truck with a bed cover, likely a Chevy Silverado. The other is a silver Kia Optima, the same car where police found Savannah and Matthew's body. The medical examiner ruled Savannah's death as a homicide. They say she had a gunshot wound to the head. 
As for Matthew, they say he had a contact gunshot wound. What does that mean? It means that it was there. Police are treating this case as a double capital murder and hope someone can help solve it. You can remain anonymous. You do not have to give your name. As you can imagine, the Soto family trying to find peace in the middle of this tragedy. They held a vigil for both Savannah and her unborn son, Fabian, yesterday at Kenwood Park. Avery Everett shows us so many of their questions are still unanswered, but the community is stepping up to support them. Our God Almighty. A prayer. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. To find peace. We just got to keep her in our hearts. And a promise to never forget. She loved everybody. She loved to live life. The family of 18-year-old Savannah Soto and her unborn child say devastation is an understatement after both of their deaths. It will never be the same again. <laughs> Police confirmed Thursday Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra were shot and killed as Chief William McManus gave an update. We were with the young girl's family, all of them heartbroken. Like I'm, in, I'm still trying to soak it all in. This family says they're still in shock and still have so many questions left unanswered. But they say the San Antonio community has stepped up to support them. We should be having a celebration of her and her baby for the new year, and we're not doing that. We're having a vigil instead. This park is a place of peace for the Soto family. Their son, Ethan Street, is here. He was shot and killed some time ago. Now, right next to it, is a memorial that's growing for Savannah and her unborn son, Fabian. We didn't get to meet him, but I would have been very honored to have met my great-grandson. The Soto family says balloons and candles won't change what happened. I know one day we'll be up there together seeing each other again. But for now, we don't, and we won't see her anymore. But for now, it brings everyone closer. This is for both of them. And gives them a chance to say goodbye. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. We want to show you that surveillance video one more time. Just take a look on your screen right now. Police say if you know anything about that dark pickup that you're seeing right there on your screen with a bed cover or the people in this video, you're urged to call SAPD homicide detectives. Their number on your screen right there, 210-207-7674. Remember, you can remain anonymous. And in your morning headlines, the U.S. Department of Justice is threatening to sue Texas over its new immigration legislation. So Senate Bill 4 is a controversial bill giving state police the power to arrest people suspected of crossing the border illegally. The law is expected to go into effect on March 5th. Boeing urging airlines to inspect all 737 MAX airplanes for possible loose or missing parts. The FAA says inspections should include looking for a possible loose bolt in the rudder control system. The agency says the move stems from incidents on two separate aircraft. Those inspections reportedly take about two hours. The Arizona Wildcats took the win after last night's Alamo Bowl against the Oklahoma Sooners. KSAT's Nick Mantis was there, and he gives us some of the game highlights. Hey guys, when the Arizona Wildcats put up their fours at the beginning of the fourth quarter, they were fully prepared for what was about to come next. Not only did they score 17 unanswered points, but their defense completely shut down Oklahoma and going on to win the Alamo Bowl 38 to 24. And Arizona head coach Jed Fish told us that the main reason why the Wildcats were ready for that fourth quarter was because of their strength and conditioning staff. We were expecting a battle. Uh, there was nothing going to be easy, even though we went up 13 nothing in the first quarter. But uh, the guys just kept competing. And um, I really believe our strength staff does an amazing job of making an emphasis of the fourth quarters when we win games. All the hard work we put in from January till now, 11, work, 11 months of work, finally paying off. And um, you know, I'm just going to try and soak this moment as much as I can, spend with my teammates and my coaches and my family, and have a good time. And with this win, the Arizona Wildcats finished the 2023 season with 10 wins, only the fourth time in program history that they've been able to do that. And they'll head back to Tucson as the champions of the Valero Alamo Bowl. For GMSA, Nick Mantis. You think Nick went over there and popped some of those balloons? I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> a lot of them out there. Big celebration last night. Congratulations to Arizona. 509, 39 degrees. Still ahead, SpaceX launches vegetables into space. 
and Google settles a consumer privacy lawsuit. More on that in today's Tech Bytes. Coming up on GMSA First Look, how long does it take for you to take down your Christmas decorations? We're gonna hear from those who have already started and those who say, oh, it's too soon. It is, it is too soon. Is it? Yeah, you have to wait till after the new year. Outside with live cam, today be a good day to get out and, well, I guess not take them down. No, yet, don't take them enjoy down. Them. Enjoy them. Enjoy them. Where are you, Can't take them down. Not yet. So, keep lighting them up. <laughs> In this morning's GMA First Look, the great holiday decoration debate. I'm selling Christmas pajamas. Leave your tray alone. Do you leave it all up to ring in the new year? You know what? We need to take down these decorations because I am over all of this clutter. Or get it out the door before 2024. Does taking down my Christmas decorations on December 26 make me a cringe? Christmas was just four days ago, but a lot of TikTok users are already starting to take their decorations down. Take Tori Breen, a mother of two who says she likes to start the new year fresh. It just gives us more space. I can have my home back. Of course, for others like Tiffany Cannon Geyser, it's far too soon. You know, we spend so much time putting them up and the kids, I think, are, are a really great reason to keep them up for as long as possible. So coming up at 7 a.m., should you keep your decorations up through the new year? With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. How can you have a New Year's party? without your holiday Christmas decorations up. As hard as it is to get them all up, you want them to stay there for a while. Yeah. Admire well, all that work. At least through January 1st. I'd yeah. say January 6th is the day that- Is that the day? Yeah. Why, epiph is, it, why is it January 6th? It's, it's the epif epiphany. Okay. Yeah. Well. The three the three w wise men, they come, you know. Okay. All right. So January 6th it yeah. is. Unless the, the uh, boss says it's <laughs> today or tomorrow or whenever. Then you do it. When she says, go start. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> it is 515 and 39 degrees. Let's take a quick look at Transguide. Wow. You might actually have to warm your car up before you oh, take off out of the driveway. Today. I had the heater on the whole time. Hey, we're not seeing any incidents on the road, but stay with us and we'll keep you posted. This is it. The big interview. Don't be nervous. You took classes from Yale in your bedroom, earned certificates from Google on that crowded, slightly stinky train ride, and went to Duke in your pajamas. So don't stop now. You're ready. You're more than ready. Jump over the giant metaphorical pit of doubt. Take $200 off a one-year Coursera Plus subscription to over 7,000 learning programs. Learn without limits. Eternal energy, uh, you don't know what's standing in front of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Start your day with Nature Me, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. In today's Tech Bites, a new space mission cloaked in secrecy. An unmanned military plane helped by a SpaceX rocket took off from Kennedy Space Center last night. Part of the payload? Vegetables, including cauliflower and peppers. Scientists will look at the effects of extended time and space on human food. Google has reportedly agreed to settle a $5 billion lawsuit over consumer privacy. The company is accused of secretly tracking millions of people who believe they were browsing the internet privately on Google Chrome. The settlement needs court approval. And men looking for love may want to consider an unscientific survey on smartphones. A TikTok influencer claims ladies he spoke with found men who own Google Android phones less attractive than guys with iPhones. One saying the green text bubbles she gets from Androids are a big no. We're sure others, though, will disagree. We'll let you decide. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon Alley. Have a great day. Take a look outside with the roads with Trans Guide. You know, we I know we had a lot of visitors in last night for the Alamo Bowl, and maybe they're getting an early start back out on the roads. Hey, uh, just stay with us on air and online. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. 
And looking at yesterday, we had a couple of clouds that decided to work their way on in here yesterday and late in the day. But boy, it, all it did was help to create a gorgeous, gorgeous sunset. Absolutely spectacular out there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Got a couple of a uh, couple of folks lined up there to land heading down to the southeast right there on runway 13. Got a lot of clear skies, good flying weather. Going to be great flying weather around here today. All right, looking back at the year, Justin made up this graphic yesterday yesterday and did all the uh, the research of course Last year was the hottest year or this year. I should say the hottest year on record going back to 1885 72.7 degrees. And as far as the lack of rain, it was the 28th driest we had just over 20 inches of rain. That was about a foot below normal. And 2022 was the driest on record. So it's been a couple of very, very dry years. Hopefully things are going to be different starting off in 2024. One thing for sure, it's going to start off on the cool side. Here's what's going on right now. We've got this big low, that's the one producing some uh, wintry weather up here in the Ohio Valley and near the Tennessee Valley, mid Mississippi area. And then that's what's pulling down the cooler air right now. That shifts off to the northeast. We get a little bit of a bump here for the weekend, which means up in the instead of low 60s, mid and upper 60s, and then 70 on Sunday. And then the front comes on through here. That's going to, it's going to come through dry, so we're not going to have to worry about anything Sunday night, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. And and that's going to pull down some cooler air. The cooler air stays in place. We get another low, which is going to slide on through here for Tuesday. That's going to give us the rain chance on Tuesday. Move on out of here by Wednesday, but we will definitely stay on the cooler side all the way through the rest of the week. And then the next low is going to work its way on in here. And as of right now, this gives us a chance of rain around the area by Friday of next week. This morning, We'll drop down a few more degrees from where we are right now. We're at 39, bottom out at 35 degrees. Clear skies, plenty of sunshine. There's one or two clouds out there this morning, and then we make it up to 56 again at noon today. Going to be topping off 62. Normal high temperature is 63. That's what we hit yesterday, so right to right just about exactly where we should be. And as far as the next seven days are concerned, like I said, today very cold this morning and then stays coolish in the afternoon uh, tomorrow a little bit warmer in the afternoon but it'll still cool off pretty quickly uh, tomorrow evening there may be a few high clouds out there tomorrow night 45 Sunday morning up to 70 last day of the year front moves through here comes through dry of course down to 42 Monday morning 60 that's going to be the warmest day next week because of the sunshine out there we're going to be hard pressed to get out of the 40s on Tuesday with the clouds and some of that rain. Then we stay in the, uh, the 50s all the way through the rest of the week. Another rain chance then by late next week. But no freezing temps on that. Port. Good point. Yeah. No freezing temperatures next week, but then it just stays very cool in the afternoons. Not even the, in the hill country area uh, by Tuesday. It, like I said, it's well, we're going to have the cloud cover out there, so we're not going to have to worry about anything like that as far as any okay. freezing precipitation at all. But again, it may I mean, in, even in parts of the hill country may be tough to get out of the upper 30s on Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. 523 39 degrees coming up next to look back at this year's top movies at the box office and which ones are expected to do well in 2024. Well, as we get ready to bring in the new year, we can't forget about the movies that made us all laugh and sometimes cry. David Daniel has a look back at what movies had a great year at the box office and what movies are expected to do great this year. Today's Hollywood Minute. Put the radio blast and goes cruising just as fast as she can now. Barbenheimer boosted the bottom line in Hollywood this year. The unlikely double feature that began as a meme pairing Barbie and Oppenheimer helped Hollywood haul in $8.58 billion at the domestic box office. That's the biggest annual total since before the pandemic began, though well behind the last pre-pandemic year, 2019, in part because studios are putting out fewer films. I'm fighting for my people. That doesn't mean the forecast is favorable for 2024. Despite such hoped for blockbusters as Dune Part 2 and Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, analysts are expecting a colder box office next year than this year. Due in part to the lengthy Writers and Actors Guild strikes, even fewer wide release movies are headed to theaters in 2024, with at least six weekends when no wide release films are scheduled to debut. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
What do your alarm sound like at 5.30? Is it is it like, is it the TV? Is it the radio? What is it? The the gonging bells or whatever it is. On the on, iPhone? On the, on the iPhone, yeah. Oh, you have like the like relaxing one? No, no. It, oh, I have the one that, yeah, that jolts me out yeah, of bed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So. You know, the, la the last story we did in the last half hour about the movies coming out, uh -huh. and we were talking about this yesterday, Maestro. The Bradley oh, Cooper movie yeah, about uh, Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. Fantastic. Great movie. And you can uh, watch it at home, too. So on one of the, the streaming services. But yeah, the wonderful, wonderful movie. All right, back to it's a good night to kind of hunker down and watch a movie tonight. Yeah. Yeah, because it's nice and cool out there and ah, beautiful. Look at the clear skies, airplanes coming in there. Ah, oh, that's fantastic. And the decorations are still up, obviously, out there with the uh, smokestacks at the quarry, also at the Concord Plaza. And clear skies, like I said, just it, fantastic. Grab a jacket before you head outside. 39 degrees, so we are right now two degrees below normal. We're going to continue to drop down a few more notches. There is a little bit of a breeze, so... You know what that means. There's a, a hint of a, a wind chill to uh, deal with. Right now, down to freezing at Kerrville. Still freezing comfort. 35 Ball Verde, 34 Bernie State. So in your backyard, you may be freezing in parts of the uh, the hill country. Mold is low. Mountain Cedar is still high, even though it's about half of what it was the previous day. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the count on Monday after that big front moves through here Sunday night because it is going to be on the breezy side Sunday night into Monday. Today, however, nothing but sunshine out there. Pretty much a repeat of yesterday. 56 degrees at noon, 62 for high temperature later on today. Weekend forecast, I think you're going to love it. A little bit warmer in the afternoons. And then, like I said, that front comes through. What's that mean for the new year? And at least there's a couple of rain chances in the new year. Details in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, David. Thank you, Mike. Traffic Authority. Get outside, look around. There's not much going on. Everybody's still asleep. It's Friday. It's the week before Christmas and New Year's. Where's everybody got to go? Nowhere. New this morning, the Kyle Police Department is looking for a 74-year-old man who was last seen yesterday around 5 p.m. 74-year-old Leonard Dix, you can see him on your screen there, was last seen wearing a gray jacket with yellow stripes a green shirt, black jeans, and black and brown shoes. So Kyle PD says Diggs was in a red 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe with the Texas license plate 2PYKV. If you have any information, you're asked to call that number on your screen right there, 512-268-3232. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are asking for your help. They're looking for any information that leads them to an arrest of those responsible for killing 47-year-old Lonnie Franklin Jr. That killing happened back in 2017. San Antonio police found the victim shot and unresponsive outside of his home. <coughs> Neighbors told police they heard a single gunshot, and that's when they called police. If you have any information about the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A woman is in the hospital this morning after being stabbed more than 30 times. This happened last night just before 10 o'clock on the street called Talon Run. It's not far from Loop 1604 and Culebra. That woman was stabbed, taken to the hospital. One person was attained at the scene. No word on her condition at this time, but this is an ongoing investigation. We're now learning the name of the victim who was shot on Liao Street after an argument that led to gunfire. The medical examiner's office has identified the victim as 35-year-old Adam Ayala. This was on Liao Street Wednesday night. San Antonio police say this shooting and another one shortly after on West Myrtle were connected. We're still working to learn more about what led to the shooting and what charges may be coming for the suspect. Hey, San Antonio nonprofits making it cool to be a dork. What? That's eh, not what you think. <laughs> the acronym stands for Downtowner Overdose Response Kit. John Paul Barajas shows us how the nonprofit that's helping hotel, bar, restaurant, other services workers know what to do when faced with an overdosing customer. And that's going to include um, nasal spray, naloxone. Learning new things doesn't make you a dork. It makes me feel empowered and, you know, knowledge is power. Learning how to respond to an overdose and administer Narcan doesn't either. But training at a modern Terno in Southtown this week sent participants home with just that. A downtowner's overdose response kit, a.k.a. a dork. I was at, at a music festival a couple years ago and no one really knew what to do. Vincent Guerrero and dozens of others wanted to learn just that. 
how to save someone from an overdose. According to the CDC, from January 2021 to January 2022, more than 107,000 people died of an overdose in the U.S. Being, being a survivor of an overdose, um, being, being brought back to life by uh, using Narcan, um, people helping, helping save my life by utilizing Narcan, um, it, it, it's really a passion of mine today. Scott Dion and Tina Rodriguez with Corazon Ministries is targeting service industry employees to train, saying for those employees, seeing drug use is more prevalent. But at anyone who is able to identify the signs of an overdose could save a life. Pale skin, um, gurgling, coughing, uh, sleepiness, drowsiness, pinpointed pupils. With the fentanyl today, right, it, it's, it's cut in almost in anything and everything, right, from the cocaine to the methamphetamines to the heroin, and they're even sprinkling it in the marijuana. Downtown overdose response kit comes with a nasal spray and injections to help prevent overdoses, as well as a breathing barrier to help provide oxygen. To request one of those kits or in-person training, you can go to Gordeson Ministries' website. We'll have a link to that on ksat.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Any morning headlines, the Secretary of State in Maine has joined Colorado in deciding that Donald Trump is ineligible to be president. The unprecedented decisions will head to the Supreme Court for a final ruling. ABC's Rachel Bade has the latest. For the second time this month, a U.S. state booting former President Donald Trump from the ballot, citing the Constitution's insurrection clause. Attorneys representing a Republican, a Democrat, and an Independent cited the Civil War era provision as justification for kicking Mr. Trump off the ballot. We believe former President Trump on January 6 engaged in an insurrection against the Constitution of the United States. And under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, that disqualifies him from holding the office of the presidency. And President Trump's legal team citing other secretaries of state who pass on removing him from the ballot. All of whom have been asked to engage in this type of uh, in, in a disqualification and every administrative official has, has declined to do that for good reason. Ultimately, Maine's secretary of state ruled the former president ineligible. When we looked at the weight of evidence, it became clear uh, that January 6th was an attack not only on the Capitol, on government officials, uh, but also an attack on the rule of law. ABC News contributor John Katko, a former Republican congressman who bucked his own party to impeach Trump following January 6th, disagreed with the ruling. It seems downright un-American. Quite frankly, I'm not a big fan of, the, of President Trump. I'm the decision follows a similar ruling in Colorado, which has been stayed until the U.S. Supreme Court makes the final call. Trump spokesman Stephen Chung blasting the decision, saying we are witnessing in real time the attempted theft of an election and personally attacking the main secretary of state, a Democrat, as a leftist. Overnight, California's secretary of state announced that Trump would remain on the ballot despite calls from the lieutenant governor to remove him. It all underscores the divide even in the Democratic Party over this controversial issue. Rachel Bade, ABC News, Washington. Well, Friday stands to be one of the busiest days at the airports across the country this season, but it's expected to get even busier over the weekend. This comes as travelers return home from the holiday rush. TSA expecting to screen more than 2.6 million people today. The FAA says the busiest day will be tomorrow with more than 48,000 flights expected. TSA has recorded excuse me, recorded passenger volumes averaging nearly two and a half million people since December 20th. That's only 5% down from the all-time air travel record of 2.9 million people the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So let's take a look at this flight aware map. Okay, David, not seeing a lot of delays. So basically anything that's red on your screen there means they're expecting, you know, delays or cancellations. So right now we have 55 delays across the country and looking pretty good with zero cancellations. We'll keep you guys updated. There was a little weather up in the Northeast like the last couple of days, but it doesn't look like it's too bad. It's so, not uh, really impacting flights there. Hopefully you'll get home on time with your bags. Yes, with your bags. 539, 39 degrees. A lot of us know about the major risk factors that can lead to having a stroke, but there is one that may not be as widely known. Cold weather can increase your risk of stroke. We'll tell you about that next. 
outside with live cam. And if you didn't go anywhere over the holidays, you just stayed home. What a time to be home in San Antonio. Absolutely gorgeous week. Things are going to be changing over the weekend, though, and getting into the work week. Oh, sorry. Work. I said it. I didn't. I should have said work week. Yes. People are still enjoying the holiday. Yeah. We'll be back. Welcome back. It's 543. Every 40 seconds, somebody in this country has a stroke. Of course, age and health, major risk factors. But did you know that falling temperatures can affect your risk as well? I did not know that. 12 on your sites, Marilyn Moritz has some simple lifestyle steps that you can take to protect your health. Stroke is one of the leading causes of death in the U.S., and the risk is nearly double for African Americans. Along with risk factors like age, weight, lack of exercise, there's something else that can increase the risk. Cold weather. So even if you're not clearing like a snow-covered driveway or digging out your car, cold weather can cause high blood pressure. And that's a key risk factor for strokes and for heart attacks. That's why doctors say stay warm. But staying bundled up so your core temperature is higher is good. Most of it because if you're cold and you're shivering, that puts a lot of stress on the body. If you're exerting yourself outdoors, dress in layers and keep your torso warm to help keep the blood flowing to your extremities. If you have problems with the circulation to the legs, making sure that your legs are well bundled up so that there's enough circulation getting to your feet. You can't do anything about the temperature, but one study found 80% of strokes are preventable. Doctors say get treatment for high blood pressure, atrial fibrillation, type 2 diabetes, and high cholesterol. Get enough physical activity, eat a balanced diet, and limit alcohol. One drink a day for women and two for men. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. 544 and 39 degrees. Credit card skimmers, they seem to be a scam that always sticks around. Coming up after the break, what signs you need to look out for so you don't fall for it. Well, it's a problem getting worse and worse by the year. Card skimmers, you've heard all about them, and some of you may have been scammed by them. Lee Waldman explains the telltale signs where these secretly placed devices are hiding and how to protect yourself from an attack. We use these valuable plastic cards seemingly every day for all kinds of things, groceries, shopping, at the gas pump. But the convenience comes with a risk, now more prevalent than ever. The Fair Isaac Corporation, better known as FICO, found that debit card skimming soared from 2021 to 2022 by 368%. For the first half of 2023, those numbers were even higher than the same time the year before by 77 percent. In November, San Antonio police arrested Alejandro Roman Vivar for putting card skimmers on gas pumps at this quick trip on North Foster Road. Back in April, Hollywood Park Police Department posted on its Facebook page warning people of a skimmer at a Circle K convenience store. It was a unique type of skimmer that is placed on the card receptacle and the person who placed it doesn't need to be nearby. So what should you do? When you're pulling up to the gas station, there's a few things you should keep your eyes out for when it comes to protecting yourself from skimmers. First, check to see if there's a security seal along the panel. Then look to where you're gonna put your card in. If there's an external reader, go ahead, give it a tug. See if anything comes loose. And when you go to type in your pin over at the keypad, make sure to cover the top with your other hand just in case a camera has been installed. But the gas station isn't the only place where you can find a skimmer. Skimming at bank ATMs is up 109% year over year. According to FICO, these types of skimmers are making up more of the compromised locations they are seeing. Texas as a whole had an increase of over 50% in compromised card readers, making it one of the top five states where this is happening. If you think you've been the victim of a card skimmer, give your bank a call and report to local authorities. I'm Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look outside with Trans Guide this morning. You know, <clears throat> seeing more than average, I guess, <laughs> amount of cars. Oh, we got some flashing lights there that just came by on the screen. But we're not really seeing any incidents out there. If you are out and about this morning, please be safe. I know a lot of people are going to be, you know, maybe heading home or heading back to San Antonio, especially driving through 35 and 410. If anything pops up, we'll let you know about it. Yeah, if you're hitting the roads uh, today, this weekend, we're not going to have any problems in and around the state. Maybe a couple of showers 
late Sunday night, early Monday, well off over toward Houston, but uh, otherwise going up 35, everything looks uh, pretty good. So, And around a good chunk of the country. I know there are a few uh, issues off to the northeast and right around mid-Mississippi Valley right now, but uh, yeah, not, not too bad out there. All right, of course, a couple of days ago, we did have the full moon, which was just spectacular. And now you can see that kind of top right section of it. It's getting trimmed off a little bit, so it is the, the waning gibbous moon. Right here, you can see it's not just that perfect circle. It is going to be the new moon on January the 11th in just about a couple of weeks, and that's a gorgeous picture. Thank you very much for that one. All right, speaking of gorgeous pictures, got a lot of clear skies. Look at all the twinkling lights off there in the distance. We've got very, very dry air in place. Temperature right now, of course, freezing in the hill country. 34 Ball Verde, Bernie stage, so maybe freezing in your backyard. 39 out there at the airport. A little bit of a wind in spots, so that puts the wind chill down to 34 out there at the airport. Feels like 30 right Right now over in Hondo and 34 up the road in New Braunfels, 32 at Randolph. The rest of the morning will drop down a couple of more notches and kind of be going back and forth. If the breeze stays up, won't get as cool, but of course we'll have the wind chill to deal with. We're going to have plenty of sunshine all day long, 56 at noon, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 62, just about exactly normal. We start off on the cool side, get up to normal, same thing like what happened yesterday. All right, let's jump ahead to Tuesday. Now through the weekend, nothing. The front comes through Sunday night into Monday. It's going to come through dry, but there is a disturbance that's going to move through here on Tuesday. So this is going to give us a chance for some rain. Now, again, long range model, kind of broad brush, but at least right now we do have that shot at some rain Tuesday going into the evening hours. The majority looks like it is going to be further up to the northeast. That's going to clear out then by Wednesday. Now we jump ahead to the end of the week, and that's when the next system system is going to be coming on in here. So Friday we start off on the overnight on the drier side, but right now it's looking like a wet commute on Friday. The rain chances around here going in through a good chunk of the day on Friday into the evening hours as well. Again, we've got this low up here to the northeast of us. This is what's uh, producing some wintry weather there in the mid south that moves on out of here. The we get a little bit of a warm up this weekend. Here's this next low that comes on in here. This is going to give us the chance for some rain by Tuesday. 30% is going with as of right now, and then that moves on out. The next one comes on in here. That's going to give us the shot at some rain by Friday, and it's also we are going to stay on the cooler side all week long next week. As a matter of fact, Monday right now looks like it's going to be the warmest day next week, and that's a high temperature of only 60. Thanks to the sunshine out there, 62 today, 67 tomorrow, 70 on Sunday. That's the warmest day of the next seven. Then the front moves on through here. That's going to keep us on the chilly side. Now, low temperatures won't be quite as cool. We are going to have a few more clouds hanging around next week. Uh, but yeah, Tuesday, 52 degrees. Good grilled cheese and soup day on Tuesday with some of those showers out there. Another chance of rain then comes in here by Friday of next week. I just noticed your New Year's tie. With the... 31 and the one on here. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. always so festive. And as we mentioned yesterday, of course, Sunday, the date will be one, two, three, one, two, three. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. I'll have 54 and 39 degrees. We'll be right back. It is 556 coming up in the next hour of GMSA. The Spurs back in action tonight on the road. They're in Portland. They were in Portland last night and they put on a show and once again, Victor with a historic night for a rookie. We got that for you coming up. Plus, we saw plenty of fireworks last night on the river walk for the Alamo Bowl. Nick Mantis brings us the highlights and reaction from one of the game's MVPs from the Alamo Bowl last night. And also coming up, it can be tricky to pick the right New Year's resolution and stick with it. How you can follow through in 2024. Trans Guide Roads looking good this morning. It is Friday. It is going to be another gorgeous day today. Mike's got your forecast. We'll get you up to date on all the traffic on the roads if there's that much there. Taking a live look outside. Beautiful out there. It is clear. It is cold though. 38 degrees right at 559 this morning. Mike has our forecast and how we, what we can expect for the new year when we ring it in this weekend. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. 
And good morning. The alarm's going off if it's 6 o'clock. And you set your alarm for 6. It's buzzing. And it's Friday, December it's Friday, 29th, the last oh. Friday of 2023. Do you, you, we were talking about alarms earlier. I still got the old, the old school alarm. I wake up to some country and western music. <laughs> you, have a, you have a radio alarm? Thank you. Yeah, very good. Yes. Yeah, I got a radio alarm. Are you kidding me? And then when you, you do trust this shift, technology, you have the second alarm, which we have a nickname, which we really can't say on the air. But yeah, that's yes. it's set for five minutes after in case the first one doesn't go off. <laughs> anyway, but how many people are actually getting up at six o'clock? I don't know. But if you uh, get up, you may want to just throw the covers back over your head and chilly. or put on a big, big robe this morning because it is definitely chilly out there. Gorgeous view of uh, the skyline downtown from our camera over there. Brooks City Base. Look at how beautiful the buildings are. Frost Bank building all still dressed up in their Christmas colors and and temperature, yes, 38 degrees here in town, 34s above Verde, Bernie Stage, freezing down to 29 now in comfort, 34 over there in Lost Maples. And we do have very dry air in place. Obviously, that's what's allowing temperatures to drop down. There's a bit of a breeze in some spots, too. So, therefore, there's a, a hint of a wind chill in a couple of places. Casterville now feels like 32 degrees. Same thing at uh, Randolph. The wind chill is down to 32. But with the slack winds or no wind at all, and that allows the coldest, heaviest air to settle to the surface. So we will continue to drop down with those clear skies and dry air and everything and the and the basically light wind out there. Molds on the low side. Mountain Cedar, about half of what it was the day before, but still on the high side. 4270. Yeah, if you're sneezing and sniffling, that's uh, probably the culprit. We'll drop down a few more degrees this morning. Clear skies, gorgeous sunrise this morning, and then make it up to 56 at noon. 62 high temperature, right what you would expect this time of year. Lots of sunshine out there. Another gorgeous evening, another gorgeous sunset and moonrise. Good looking weekend as well. We'll warm up a bit, but I'll tell you what, if you got a, uh, a coat for Christmas, you're going to get some use out of it in this forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority right now. Let's take a look at some of the, uh, the roads around town. Over there at 37 at 410. Looks like we do have some flashing lights over there. 10 at medical. Everything is moving along very well. And looking at some of the other uh, TransGuide cameras around town right now, no problems out there, just that uh, those flashing lights over there, 37 at 410. We'll see what's going on with that and keep you up to date over the rest of the hour. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a woman is in the hospital with serious injuries after being shot on the city's west side. San Antonio police tell us that it happened at Pro's Apartments on Westover Hills around 1030 last night. The woman showed up at her ex-boyfriend's place to get her belongings. And SCPD says that's when she allegedly got into an argument with another woman. That escalated into a fight. The man shot her in the chest and the hand. She was taken to the hospital. Both the man and other woman were detained for questioning. Firefighters in Converse also worked to put out a garage fire just before 1 o'clock this morning. Officials say the people living inside that home all got out safe. However, we're told the blaze caused around $100,000 in damage. The Red Cross was called out to assist the family in finding a place to stay. We should be having a celebration of her and her baby for the new year, and we're not doing that. We're having a vigil instead, mourning for her and crying for her, and it's not right. Now to the latest of the story we've been covering all week. San Antonio police are still trying to figure out how Savannah Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra ended up dead in a car with gunshot wounds. Overnight, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office says has said both deaths are officially homicide. So far, no arrests have been made. SAPD did release this surveillance video that you can see behind us right here. Here is a pickup truck and a car right there. That shows they are calling a person of interest getting out of that pickup truck. As Daniela Barrara tells us, detectives hope the video will lead to the couple's killer. A clue in a callous crime. Clearly, it was a heinous act. Two days ago, San Antonio police found pregnant Savannah Soto and her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra, dead in a car on the northwest side. Now, they're sharing this surveillance video. We are hoping that uh, someone is able to identify the individuals that are seen in this video. McManus says this clip was taken not far or long before the gruesome discovery on Danny Kay. Detectives right now are combing through days of surveillance video from several different locations that the victims were known to be. These two people are who police are calling people of interest. One is in a dark pickup truck with a bed cover likely a Chevy Silverado. The other is a silver Kia Optima. 
the same car where police found Savannah and Matthew's body. The medical examiner ruled Savannah's death as a homicide. They say she had a gunshot wound to the head. As for Matthew, they say he had a contact gunshot wound. What does that mean? It means that it was there. Police are treating this case as a double capital murder and hope someone can help solve it. You can remain anonymous. You do not have to give your name. Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. And meanwhile, the Soto family is trying to find peace in the middle of this tragedy. They held a vigil for both Savannah and her unborn son, Fabian, yesterday at Kenwood Park. Avery Everett was there, and she shows us how their questions are still unanswered, but the community is stepping up to support that family. Our God Almighty. A prayer. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. To find peace. We just got to keep her in our hearts. And a promise to never forget. She loved everybody. She loved to live life. The family of 18-year-old Savannah Soto and her unborn child say devastation is an understatement after both of their deaths. It will never be the same again. <laughs> Police confirmed Thursday Soto and her boyfriend Matthew Guerra were shot and killed as Chief William McManus gave an update. We were with the young girl's family, all of them heartbroken. Like I'm, in, I'm still trying to soak it all in. This family says they're still in shock and still have so many questions left unanswered. But they say the San Antonio community has stepped up to support them. We should be having a celebration of her and her baby for the new year, and we're not doing that. We're having a vigil instead. This park is a place of peace for the Soto family. Their son, Ethan Stree, is here. He was shot and killed some time ago. Now, right next to it, is a memorial that's growing for Savannah and her unborn son, Fabian. We didn't get to meet him, but I would have been very honored to have met my great-grandson. The Soto family says balloons and candles won't change what happened. I know one day we'll be up there together seeing each other again. But for now, we don't, and we won't see her anymore. But for now, it brings everyone closer. This is for both of them. And gives them a chance to say goodbye. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. So we want to show you that surveillance video one more time. Take a look on your screen. You see that dark truck in that silver car in the back corner of that video. Police say if you know anything about that dark pickup with a bed cover or the people in this video, call Homicide Detectives. That number on your screen right there, 210-207-7674. Remember, you can remain anonymous. Right now on KSET.com, the U.S. Department of Justice threatening to sue Texas over its new immigration legislation. Senate Bill 4 is the controversial bill, giving state police the power to arrest people suspected of crossing the border illegally. The law is expected to go into effect on March 5th. In the meantime, New York City Mayor Eric Adams is issuing new requirements for charter buses carrying migrants from Texas. As the city is experiencing a surging crisis, the executive order signed by Adams will require the bus companies to provide details about people they are transporting. They will be required to give 32 hours notice before arriving in the city. The executive order will also require charter bus companies to drop off asylum seekers in Manhattan only between 8.30 a.m. until noon Monday through Friday. Those who do not comply will face a Class B misdemeanor. This is not stopping people from coming, but about ensuring the safety of migrants and making sure they can arrive in a coordinated and orderly way. Last week, New York City experienced what the mayor's office says is the highest one day total of migrant buses arriving. In your morning headlines, the Secretary of State in Maine has joined Colorado in deciding that Donald Trump is ineligible to be president, but not all states agree on this decision. Overnight, California's Secretary of State chose to leave Trump on the state's ballot for the Republican primary, despite calls from the lieutenant governor to remove him. For now, the decision on if states can move forward has been put on hold until the U.S. Supreme Court makes that final call. We're going to take you to the West Coast. A storm sending a huge wave crashing into coastal towns, flooding streets and sweeping people literally off their feet. Here's that video. The rogue wave in Ventura sweeping onlookers just away, chasing them right down the street. Some people 50 yards down the street. At least eight people were taken to the hospital. Storms brewing in the Pacific produced waves of over 30 feet. 
slamming the coast from San Diego all the way up to San Francisco. Officials warning people flocking to see the impressive water. Better be alert. Don't want to get too close or you could get swept away. If you turn your back for even a split second, you can be knocked over, swept away. As of last night, evacuation orders were issued for several coastal towns in California with high surf expected again today. Emergency crews are rolling out heavy equipment to reinforce sand barriers. 610 and 38 degrees. Still coming up at 630, Wimby and the Spurs put on a show last night in Portland. We've got the highlights from their first game of two in a row and how Wimbin Yaman made history again as a rookie. And after the break, it can be tricky to pick the right New Year's resolution and actually stick with it. How you can follow through in 24, that's next. And once you get outside with live cam, another beautiful day headed our way today. Get out and enjoy. It's 38 chilly degrees right now, so you might need a little jacket if you're getting up and headed outside. Might need to warm up your car too if it's parked outside. You're getting ready to go somewhere.